Oh yeah, sexy biscuits. Nice. Long black clothes, 1975 and welcome to a pickups video not necessarily a gaming pickups video but I probably haven't done a pickups video in over a year or maybe just shy under a year so here's my pickups video for 2020 it's not a gaming pickups video but um, it's uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in this that I'm super happy about uh, uh, basically um, pop culture stuff that I'm going to display on my gaming shelf and stuff like that and I probably won't even open but yeah really really chuffed with some of this stuff because um, one of it some of it was a, a, an offer from Amazon and one of these items was something I didn't even know no I saw a post of it on Facebook in one of the companies that advertises once they you know like the algorithms work out what stuff you like to click on and stuff like that but I didn't know if I'd see it in the wild because obviously it's quite popular and people go after it and there is one game um, which you'll understand if you watch this little segment I shot um, I say little it was about four minutes I shot out in the wild with my video glasses I'm still trying to get the hang of this it's an independent game store from St George called um, Game Scene uh, UK. It's a really, really small store. It's for an independent. I always say you've got to support and look after your independent stores. You know, price-wise, they're not going to compete with supermarkets, main high street places and things like that. But ultimately, you know, you got to support them because once they're all gone, then th there is no alternative to the mainstay of where we buy stuff. And if that means you have to dig your hand into your pocket a little bit more, I say it's worth it, particularly when you see the sheer variety of systems they cater for in this video clip. Now, I do apologize. I'm having problems with my glasses at the moment. I can't work out, for the love of God, how to get rid of the timestamp in the bottom left-hand corner, which, to be perfectly honest, isn't really an issue. But the, the, the few early videos I've shot with it, which are on YouTube, um, they seem to be fine, apart from the fact they will probably give you motion sickness, as will this. But this and the previous ones seem to be, I don't know, frame rate issues, as in it kind of stops and stuff you know, and stutters and stuff like that. But, oh, well, I'm going to leave it in there. If you're ever in the Bristol area, particularly in St. George, I really do recommend you give this place a try. Anyway, I've waffled. Have a look at the footage. So this is Game Scene UK. I don't think it's a chain or anything like that. I've always mentioned it would be so happy. I think it's an independent store based on its receipts. It's in St. George. I love this, though, because it's so small. It's like, it, make an effort to maximise everything. Like, right behind the door here, there's a cardboard um, stand, but look, you can you can see they've got everything. There's PlayStation games, there's Amstrad Commodore uh, games in the little small cardboard boxes. I love those boxes. If we look down here, there's PlayStation 1 games. I'm hoping, or assuming, Spectrum games on the floor, that people would actually bother to look behind the door before they opened it, uh, not trap the individual, but it's Bristol, so you don't know. Decent Xbox One selection of games. Saw that, I think it's safe to say I'm picking that up. But yeah, I love it. I really, really like this store. I like small stores like this. I've defended them before, but a lot of the um, jip they seem to get of bigger stores, uh, bigger stores, of, um, you know, sort of uh, against bigger stores is their prices. But what do you expect? They don't have the buying power and you should support small independent stores like this. They've got brilliant glass cabinets here. You can see more PlayStation 1 games, some of the more rarer or up there price wise I would say for them but yeah really 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 cool stuff in there actually mass system games as well I personally don't think their prices are that high if anyone else has been here by all means let me know what you think um taste is subjective obviously Mega Drive Pad N64 Pad N64 games at the bottom and loose Mega Drive games at the bottom as well as well as you can see down there and N64 and a snare is really about 50 quid ish Oh, they were pretty reasonably priced. Small 360 collection, I can live with that. Um, kind of moved on from mine. Uh, 3DS and DS collection. Another cabinet here. Uh, look, Box Mega Drive, £49. Pretty reasonable, I think. Same as the cash converters. Uh, loose, you know, um, 
DS games and stuff like that. And brilliant selection for your Warhammer and your painting and stuff like that. Got your card game selection as well. Pretty much caters to everything. This is how you can tell the prices. Mini Mega Drive, £69. Actual price. You know, it's new. That's right. PlayStation uh, Classic, £49. Obviously, half the price of at launch. I know, obviously, on Amazon Prime Days and stuff like that, you could pick them up for 15 quid, But £49, brand new, in a store like this with the overheads that they have. To be fair, really, really isn't that bad. Um, over the other side of the room here, actually, you've got some uh, more 360 games, actually. So there's a bigger selection than I thought they were. I'm not sure what they've kind of mixed them all up sporadically and stuff like that. But then we go into another cabinet. You see a Game Boy case there. I haven't seen one of those in years. Uh, boxed N64, £89. Is that expensive? I don't know. Box NES, is that £89 as well? I think that's pretty much a decent going rate. Um, I'm not an expert by any means. Is that a boxed math system on the, the bottom one with the one math system too which has your uh, Sonic game built in and then obviously you got, as you would expect, the biggest selection in this store is PlayStation 4 stuff. Anyway, so moving over from that, they've got a decent Wii selection, decent Wii U selection. I still like, you know, to check for the Wii games because I'm still looking for Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions without going for, you know, having to sell a kidney. Bit disappointed I've gone in there before, they've had a far bigger selection of GameCube games, but then to be fair, that's pretty much, you know, of the moment what they have in stock. And then I've learned something about video spy glasses because you tilt your head sideways, don't you? When you're 29 quid, is that expensive? Um, yeah, tilt your head sideways when you want to read a spine. Not so much helpful for you guys there out in, you know, real land. Again, bro God, the price of Veronica, Co Veronica, has gone up in recent years. Never even heard of that game. Uh, I might have to look up some gameplays and see what it is. It seems to go for a pretty decent price. However, this place is a lot cheaper, I would say, actually, than the CEX just down the road. Hello, on the high street, which, quite frankly, I thought that's quite pricey. Yeah, you're right. Prices took the absolute yes, piss. So there you go. As you can probably tell from the video there, with the and obviously I put narration over the top because there was a radio playing in there. The guy was really polite, super, super polite and friendly. Um, they had a really good selection of systems. I mean, I pretty much covered everything in the commentary on that video, you know, but... I do like it when you find Carvel box cased uh, Spectrum in Amstrad and Commodore 64 games like that. And they had a whole ton of systems you could buy games for, you know, all the usual suspects. And, you know, like I said, Spectrum and stuff like that. Awesome. I thought they were priced all right. As I mentioned in the commentary, you can tell when something's priced all right because... Um, because of their overheads, you know, in a small store like that and stuff like that. And they don't have the bulk buying purchases. When their PlayStation Classic is half price then because obviously you can go, ah, but Amazon, £15 and this and that and this. Yeah, this is an independent store. So that's how I work it out. And obviously their Mega Drive Mini was the regular price. So um, yeah, I really do recommend it. You could tell which game I bought and that would be uh, the Xbox One version of the Back to the Future game by Telltale. Um, it says new, £20. I don't know if I'd say it was new. Um, maybe it is, I don't know. I never had this on the 360, I because I never had a 360 when it was out, but I did have it uh, on the Wii. I still have it on the Wii. It's not the best version to play of it, but it's a fully uh, playable version. It's the worst version of a very good game. Absolutely love and adore this game. Pretty much the only good Back to the Future game that was ever released. I don't know who the kid is who voices Michael J. Fox in this, but he's absolutely, he's just... It's scary how good he is. I think, does Christopher Lloyd do his own voice? Anyway, yeah, it's, so it's an episodic kind of, uh, well, point and click, but it's not point and click. But you know what I mean if you've played it. And simply because, um, like, 20 quid, I don't know if that's a good price, but I had to have it on my Xbox One. Absolutely had to have it on my Xbox One. And this is the, is it the 30th? 30th anniversary edition, so this would have been, you know, to time with the movies anniversary and stuff like that. So I'm pretty sure what it says new, it's definitely a discontinued game, isn't it? I don't even know what it goes for on Amazon. I was just quite surprised to see it in the wild. I don't think I have seen this in any game store. I mean, there was a CEX down the road, they didn't have it. I've been in many, many CEXs. Uh, I've never seen it in there, so I don't know. Is it hard to get now that it's discontinued? Is it rare? Probably not, but it's back to the future, and I have to own it. If it's Back to the Future, it's the law. Now, um, Hot Wheels. Yes, anyone knows me knows I absolutely love and adore my Hot Wheels. I have put two of the things I've purchased here, I have already put on 
Facebook. But many people don't follow me on Facebook but do watch my YouTube channel. And like I said, this was just a really good haul of non-gaming stuff bar that one game. But I love my Hot Wheels. I absolutely do. And I did not know this was a thing. Now, I could say... I um could say, I'll learn to talk in a minute, you could say that um, the main thing about Hot Wheels is when it comes to licenses and stuff like that would be like, you know, like I love the fact that they license Gas Monkey, um, they license, uh, you know, um, Mario and stuff like that, but they also license movie cars so you can get all the Batmobiles. Maybe one day, I don't know if people want to see it, I'll do my Hot Wheels Batmobile collection because it is huge. Seriously, it is absolutely huge. Um, and obviously they do Back to the Future. I have uh, the DeLorean. I have very uh, great many of DeLoreans because even though you could argue, and I don't open them, um, you only you know, need a couple. I just, if I see them, I buy them because, you know, Hot Wheels are a quid. These were three pounds a pop and they aren't licensed vehicles, but they obviously are a licensed franchise. And that would be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This is basically, as I mentioned, pop culture stuff that's going to go on my gaming shelf just because, well, because it looks awesome and I love turtles. But yeah, basically it's four turtles and a group um, shot, shot, vehicle. And as you can see, I mean, they're completely made up fabricated vehicles, but I don't care. I just love the fact that it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Obviously Hot Wheels is American. Just a bit, you know, me being kind of a pointless moan, groan, whine, etc. More nostalgia for me for being Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, even though I was stupid. It was stupid, or I thought it was stupid as a kid not being able to have the word ninja because of whining parent groups and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so like I said, they're not, you know, licensed vehicles or anything like that, completely fabricated, but they have the likeness of the turtles on them. And there's one for each and every turtle. So that's kind of cool. But yeah, um, Rogue Cog. I see what you did there. Spelt with a K, but obviously that's uh, Donatello. No, that's not Donatello, that's Leonardo, never mind, because he's blue. Uh, and then you've got, um, I can't read it because the lighting is so bad, but a gadster. I don't even know what you're trying to do there, but yeah. Uh, then we got Donatello. But yeah, basically these are a display item, you know, obviously all four of them together and the, the fifth one, which is a group shop together. Probably uh, I'm going to put some tacks down the front of my game shelf and one of the pillars and have them down there. But yeah, like I said, just it's just a whole massive nostalgia thing. Oh, look, a hot rod. Um, Midnight Otto. Michelangelo. But yeah, like I said, think, think displayed, you know. In sequence, like I said, it's a nostalgia thing and it's a pop culture thing, but I stuff like this I could eat up. It's my it literally is my bread and butter. Also, I have outside of Batman and Back to the Future a pretty sizable Hot Wheels collection. Again, I should probably do something on that. And then this is the Vanster um, with my favorite. Raff was always my favorite, but yeah, like I said, it's just a box size, just so. So nice. I love it when they do stuff like this. They did one for Star Trek, one of the Star Trek anniversaries a few years ago, but uh, and I've got some of those. But yeah, when I saw all of these, I had to buy them, like I said, just, just for display purpose. Um, surfing School Bus, and that would be the group Turtles shot. But yeah, uh, I've seen these once. They're at my local supermarket. There was a few of each, but probably wouldn't be able to make more than two sets. And so I got a set for myself absolutely all over it. Three quid a pop per you know um vehicle and yeah like i said it's just it's a nostalgia thing a display thing and like i said um i love stuff like that don't know why i put this down over there now if you saw me retrying out my um uh spy glasses again the other day even before i tried them out again in this video you saw that i went to a toy store down the road, uh, out of town, one called Smith's or Smythe's, I don't know, it's a Y instead of an I because they want to be cool. And they had an absolutely massive wall of Funko Pop figures. And I love Funko Pop figures. However, I'm not a diehard collector. I don't, you know, buy a massive amount of stuff. I just buy it because I love them. I love the, the cool, cute vinyl depiction of, you know, comics, movies, you know, bands, everything like that. It's just something very appealing to me again something that i doubt i'll ever open either unless i get duplicates but then to me my ocd gets all like butt hurt and shit if i even think about opening stuff it makes my spider sense tingle 
But uh, I've got, uh, I've got, you know, the, some Back to the Future ones. Uh, I've got some Rocco's Modern Life ones. If it appeals to me, or it was a show I love or I have nostalgia for, it, I will buy it. But I'm not a die-hard collector. Uh, I've got the Deadpool um, Bob Ross one. Are we noticing a theme? Love me some Bob Ross. Um, but when I saw this, I knew it was out, but I don't know if it was rare or something, because I've never seen it anywhere and it was a tenner which I thought was an absolutely brilliant brilliant price and so I bought me the John Wick one because I absolutely love John Wick it comes with a dog you can also see that his gun barrel is bent which would be quite easy to fix using a hairdryer only I'm not going to open it but yeah love me John Wick absolutely fantastic series of films it's going to be amazing next year when John Wick and the Matrix 4 are released on the same day cinema you better do uh, a double header of that or a back to back whatever you call it because that's that's just how often does cool shit like that happen but yeah John Wick tenor absolutely all over this generally was quite surprised when I saw this I knew it was a thing but I would have thought it'd be a little bit harder to find I don't know what the quantity these are kind of printed in if that's the right descriptive term um but print run, I guess, would be, yeah. But like, I, I just, I, I've not seen it before and I've not seen it since. So, yeah, uh, otherwise I probably would have bought two so I could have opened one up. But very, very happy about that. Now, obviously, cool Back to the Future stuff, ignoring the game, the only game in this pickup video <clears throat> I showed um, a little bit earlier on. But came across an offer on Amazon uh, from a private seller, which was um, a three for two offer. I don't know if it was getting rid of old stock or stuff like that, because these things can be, if you look in the wrong places, still quite premium. And I have one of them, but if, if it's going to give me three for the price of two, then essentially I get a free... Oh, fuck it, I'll say it. A free Back to the Future DeLorean, despite the fact that I already have one box and I already have one opened. You can never have too many Back to the Future DeLoreans. And it would be these. These are by far the best models for the price. They go from sort of, um, I've seen them go from £18.99 way up to £25, £27. But uh, three of these were um, basically... Uh, would be £60, so I, I think um, the offer was about 40 So they were good at price if they were individual anyway, but these are absolutely fantastic models. These are going to be displayed again. Um, obviously, I'm not going to have two of these next to each other boxed. <laughs> Maybe I'll put the open one on top and leave it inside, but I'm not going to get rid of it. You know, it's also it's a good trading thing, but yeah. So one from each movie. Like I said, it, I, I'm not opening it. But the doors open and stuff like that. This is the Back to the Future DeLorean from the original movie. Um, my favourite iteration of the DeLorean and my favourite movie of all time ever, which I'm pretty sure you know if you watch this channel. But look at it. The box art, you know, the blurb of the film and everything about these is just... They're made, personally, I think, uh, for collectors and to keep sealed. But yeah. And obviously, who is it who makes them? Welly. Well, that's a great name. It's a 1 to 24 scale, ages 8 plus. How could it be a choking hazard if you simply raise your child to never take anything he buys out of the box? Safety and collection tips in one. That's a sign of any good parent. But yeah, I just love these. I absolutely love these. I love the fact that the variation between each of the packets, you know, really does co in line co in line <laughs> You know what I mean. Uh, with the film. So then we have the Back to the Future to DeLorean as far as I can tell the wheels do go up you have a different blurb on the back explaining the movie as well as a different depiction uh or scene I should say and obviously the one most noticeable you, you, you think of I would say sorry um with the movie would be that scene in Hill Valley so like effort has gone into these uh I'm a little bit kind of shouldn't there or is that supposed to be where's my Mr Fusion coffee grinder looking thing but yeah, look, nice pictures at the bottom underneath um, Hill Valley Square, so it's the hoverboard and stuff like that. A lot of love has gone into these. If you, Like I said, if you look hard enough, individually you can bag them for 20 quid. Like I said, don't just go through like the main part of Amazon. I'm always saying go drill down through the private sellers and you will always bag a bargain. But three for two, I was all over that. And obviously each of them has the logo representing the movie you know, on the side. So yeah, it is welly. 
I must have a look and see. I bought, I bought, and it, I left it in my brother's house. It's not made by Willie. I've got the Ghostbusters Ecto-1, which I bagged the other day for 20 quid, out in the world in that store, Smith's or Smythe's or whatever it is. But uh, I was showing off when I was around my brother's house, and um, I left it there. Because, you know, I'm an umpty and I do stuff like that from time to time. But yeah, these are really, really nice. Really, really detailed. Doors open, wheels move on that. I mean, what more could you say? Or well, what more could you want? DeLorean Time Machine? Uh, collect all three. Way ahead of you there, DeLorean Time Machine. Way ahead of you there. And then this, to me, is the best um, packaged one. So it's the Time Machine from Back to the Future 3. You can see, obviously, how accurate it is. It's got the couple together time circuits on it. It's got the, um, you know, the, the, the white-walled tyres. Um, it's my favourite, least favourite depiction of the DeLorean, but... It's from Back to the Future, and I have to have it, and also I love DeLorean, so even if it wasn't in Back to the Future looking like this, I would have it anyway, because it's a spruced up, funky looking DeLorean. But what I like about this one is the box art is done like, or done with a wood effect, I should say, so it kind of replicates the fact that, you know, uh, the town and everything's all built out of wood, it's the old west and stuff like that, but yeah. So, uh, I have yet to know how I'm going to display these, I'm going to have to make some room, hell, I might even have to get some more shelves. In, in fact, I might even just separate all my games out into a game shelf, separate all my toys out into a toy shelf. You know, live the dream, I say. Two shelves. That's really rolling that out there, don't you think? But yeah, so the, these are absolutely amazing. Three for two, bargain any day of the week, but just nice models anyway. Like I said, if you're a massive fan of Back to the Future, and you should be, because otherwise, what the hell's wrong with you? Um, sort your life out. These models are, you know, they are affordable. I'm sure there's better ones out there, but for the money, like I said, 20 quid a pop, I find these really, really, really good, decent looking models. I mean, you're probably saying, but how good can they be if you're never going to take them out of the box? That's my OCD, and that's how I roll. So, yeah, pick up video, because I very, very rarely do pick up videos. There's nothing wrong with pick up videos, um, particularly in the fact that I, I don't really do them. I don't. You know, certainly don't do them when I don't even have any games in them, bar one. But that John Wick and those DeLoreans and the fact that I got them for such a good price and those turtles, you know, th this is all stuff that I could eat up all day long. My bread and butter, if you will. It's all from the 80s, apart from John Wick, obviously. It's absolutely fantastic and shiny. So, yeah, I thought I would share it in a pickup video and also... While I'm still trying to iron the kinks out of these, I thought I'd show you a little bit of footage of a game store out in the wild because obviously um, we all like game stores, don't we? And as I mentioned at the start of this video, support your independent game stores because you'll miss them when they're gone. Anyway, as always, I would love to know what you think about the things I've bought in this video, particularly those DeLoreans and John Wick. And thank you very much for watching. I'll see you later.